Hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2, and today I'll be showing you guys what is by far and away the best Hunter build that I've ever used. I'm sure you guys already know how powerful Arc 3.0 Hunter can be, but with access to the new fragments and all of the artifact mods, Hunter gets even more broken. The build basically has everything you could ever want a build to have. You get like a ton of ad clear potential with your melee and grenades, which you can actually spam indefinitely, even getting your grenade back in just a few seconds with almost no discipline at all. On top of that, your melee itself can do some absolutely insane damage, and you get amazing survivability via some fragments, your exotic, etc. You can also get your entire super in literally less than a minute, which is also extremely good. Honestly, the best part about this build is you don't really need good gear or anything because we're getting a lot of our ability regen literally just through our gear and our mods, so it's incredibly easy to set up, and honestly, it's a ton of fun to use, being able to just like spam your melee as well as your grenade. It's just very, very strong and a lot of fun overall. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. Before I get into the video, I want to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, which helps enable me to continue to create content for a living and that sponsor is call of the wild the angler call of the wild the angler is a genre defying new open world fishing game from the creators of the hit hunting game the hunter call of the wild explore the great outdoors by boat off-road vehicle or on foot and discover a living breathing reserve on your own or in online co-op multiplayer for up to 12 players battle a variety of unique species in an authentic and engaging fishing experience master various fishing techniques, and customize your character to become an expert angler. Call of the Wild The Angler releases August 31st on PC via Steam, the Epic Games Store, and the Microsoft Store, so make sure to wishlist it now if you're interested. If you're more into hunting, make sure to check out Expansive World's immersive open world hunting game, The Hunter Call of the Wild. Link, of course, will be in the description for both games. And a huge thanks to Call of the Wild for sponsoring this video. All right, let's start off with the exotic, and then we'll talk about everything else about the build. Uh, the build at face value seems like, you know, pretty standard Arc 3.0 Hunter build, probably stuff that you guys have seen. You Using like liar's handshake and stuff we're going to be using our melee that's pretty obvious stuff right but what actually differentiates this build from a lot of the other ones that you guys have already seen is that i'm using a whole bunch of ability regeneration stuff which is going to enable me to just spam my grenade like crazy as well as getting our super back very very quickly while also having all of that melee damage and everything just working together my main goal with this build was to be able to spam my grenade as much as humanly possible while also getting the super back very quickly while also doing a lot of damage with my melee, and I think that we have achieved this. All right, let's just get into it. So for the exotic, obviously we're gonna be using Liar's Handshake. There isn't really any other options for the build. I mean, this is just perfect for it. It's very intuitive because we're gonna be using our melee, and this gives us a ton of survivability. So obviously, this is the go-to for the build. Getting into the abilities, aspects, and fragments. Obviously, we're gonna be using Gambler's Dodge, so every time that we dodge near an enemy, it's going to fully recharge our melee ability. And then using Combination Blow, after we get a kill with our melee, it's going to fully recharge our dodge. So we can basically just go back and forth between dodging and meleeing. Combination Blow is obviously a no-brainer here because every time we're going to get a melee kill, it's not only going to give us our full class ability back, right? It's also going to heal us. So in tandem with Liar's Handshake, this pretty much full heals us every time that we get a kill with our melee. And the amount of melee damage that this stacks is like absolutely insane. Your melee isn't really going to do anything without Combination Blow, so definitely go for that. When it comes to your grenade, there's only two that I really like. Uh, Pulse Grenade, I think, is ultimately like overall the best grenade, and I think Storm Grenade is probably second to that. Pulse Grenade just does a pretty good amount of damage. The explosion radius is very large and I generally just like using it and also the cooldown is pretty good at two minutes and one second storm grenade I think does like half as much damage as pulse grenade but it does have a lower cooldown so feel free to use whatever you want personally though I like to use pulse grenade all right when it comes to the aspects we want to be using lethal current with flow state tempest strike literally just doesn't do anything but also lethal current is incredibly good because it's going to make it to where after you dodge your next melee attack has increased lunge range and it's also going to jolt the target and we're going to be dodging meleeing dodging meleeing constantly so being able to apply Jolt with our melee is very good, and it's what's going to enable it to get some AoE, but we also gain some other things by having Jolt in the first place as well. On top of that, anytime that you damage a Jolted target with your melee, it's also going to blind them, so this makes it to where, like, fighting champions, or literally just any high health target, they have, like, no chance. You're not really going to be in any danger, right, because you're going to be blinding them, so that's very, very powerful. And then we get Flow State, so anytime that we defeat a Jolted target, we're automatically going to get Amplified. It's nice, it's not honestly that great. The best part about this though is probably that the fact that when you are amplified it's actually going to give us more resistance while we are actually in the dodge animation and it's also going to increase our reload speed a little bit more than it already is honestly this isn't really going to do all that much it's mainly just for getting higher uptime on amplified but you could already get really high uptime on amplified because you get it after getting like four kills with any arc damage but honestly there isn't really a reason to use tempest strike anyway so flow state is pretty much going to be the default for the fragments we got a ton of new ones which are very very good from the raid and this honestly just takes the build to a whole nother level and is one of the reasons we're able to get so much ability regeneration starting off with the one that we already had is spark of shock it's going to make it to where our arc grenades are going to jolt targets jolt 
obviously is good because it's just going to give us a whole bunch of AoE. But when we pair this with Spark of Ions, anytime we defeat a Jolted target, it's going to create an Ionic Trace. An Ionic Trace is basically just a well so anytime that we pick this up it's just going to give us ability energy i believe the number that i heard is 13 percent this is just very very good because anytime that we get a kill with our grenade or our melee which is also going to apply jolt we're just going to be getting ionic traces like crazy Spark of Ions does have an internal cooldown, but it is still definitely worth using. One thought that I had is that using Spark of Ions in tandem with Trace Evidence would be very good because just an arc debuff would literally just be Jolt, right? So then in theory, if you get a kill on a Jolted enemy, it could spawn two Ionic Traces. I tried Trace Evidence and I don't know if it got disabled or if it's bugged or if I'm just stupid, but I saw absolutely no difference with this. I tried Trace Evidence by itself and I literally didn't see any Ionic Traces spawning, even when I got kills that on enemies that were you know blinded and Jolted. Just keep that in mind. If this does end up getting fixed, I'd highly recommend using it instead of the fragment actually because the fragment has a cooldown, whereas trace evidence I don't think would have a cooldown. Moving on to the rest of the fragments, I have Spark of Feedback. The main reason for this is uh, it's going to give us some resilience, but also just the chance of getting extra melee damage. And there's not that many other fragments that are like legitimately good. If you're curious how this works, so basically if any enemy melees you, you're going to get a buff called Feedback. That's going to increase your melee damage by 75%. So as you can see in this clip, normally I do 8,675, which is the default melee, no combination blow stacked. And then if I actually get feedback to proc, I'm going to do 15,181, so 75% increase, which is a ton of extra damage, but honestly, it's very difficult to proc. The main reason I'm using it is just for the resilience and just the chance of additional damage, but I in no shape or form would rely on Spark of Feedback to actually increase your melee damage. And lastly, I'm using Spark of Resistance just for this massive amount of additional survivability. This makes it to where you don't actually need 100 resilience to gain the maximum damage resistance, and it's also just incredibly strong when you're running around and just want general survivability. In terms of some other options that are good, I think Spark of Magnitude is particularly good just for increasing the overall damage output of your grenade. And alternatively, Spark of Amplitude is decent for getting orbs of power if you have some synergy with orbs of power, but it does have a relatively long cooldown, so you can't just like spawn an insane amount of at, uh, orbs, which I think is a little bit unfortunate, but what can you do? All right, let's get into the gear, and then we'll talk about weapons. So the first thing that you probably noticed is that my stats look terrible. <laughs> the main reason for this is that, honestly, I don't really have very much resilience gear on my Hunter, but also the thing that's very interesting about this build is that you don't need any stats at all. The reason being, we don't need reduced cooldown on our dodge because we get our dodge back every time that we get a melee kill, so we don't really need mobility. We don't need all that much resilience because we're getting a whole bunch of additional damage resistance with a spark of resilience, or whatever it's called. Getting some resilience certainly is nice, which is the stat that I did decide to go for. Recovery you don't really need because you're actually healing from getting melee kills. Discipline you don't need because we're getting maximum grenade cooldown regeneration via the artifact mod lightning strikes twice. Intellect you don't really need all that much if you actually end up using Font of Wisdom, which is basically going to give you maximum intellect. However, if you aren't using Font of Wisdom like me, you do want to have a little bit of intellect. And of course, strength, you don't need any strength because we don't need to reduce our melee cooldown because every time we dodge, we get our melee back. That's kind of the best part about this build. If you feel like you want 100 recovery and 100 resilience, you could be the tankiest person on the planet. Or if you just want to be able to spam your super like crazy and not have to rely on Font of Wisdom, you could just put Intellect at 100 and you just don't need Discipline high. Or you could put your Discipline at 100 and then instead of using Lightning Strikes twice, you could just use uh, Trace Evidence. Sorry for the rambling there. There's just a lot of different options and I want to give you guys uh, the full context. You don't need crazy gear with this build though. You can just slap on what I have and your abilities will regen immediately and you'll have a perfectly good time. Getting into all the gear, obviously I have a Liar's Handshake as the exotic and let's just go piece by piece. So for the helmet, I recommend having an arc helmet so that you can get hands on to where anytime that you get a melee kill, you gain bonus super energy. This gives you a whole bunch of additional energy. Certainly don't have to use two of them. I was kind of just doing that for the clip. Generally, I'd probably just put on Harmonic Siphon to get some orbs or I'd put on an Ammo Finder of choice. Of choice. Uh, obviously, I don't have a stat mod here i probably would but there's not a single stat that if i gain five i actually go into the next tier so that's unlucky and then i have elemental ordinance so anytime that i defeat an enemy with a grenade it's going to spawn an elemental well elemental wells are obviously very good so that we get additional um energy back primarily just for our grenades for our gloves i recommend having solar gloves so that you can get at least one impact induction so anytime you cause damage with a melee attack it's going to further reduce the cooldown of your grenade and of course if you want any champion mods you just swap out an impact induction maybe lose a stat mod 
and that's fine. Uh, but obviously solar is also good because we're getting bountiful wells. So anytime that we spawn an elemental well, it's going to give us two, which is pretty much mandatory if you want to get your grenade back incredibly quickly with the build. But if you don't care all that much about your grenade, you certainly don't need to use bountiful wells. For the chest, it's void. doesn't really need to be void. Um, the main reason I do this is just because thermoshock plating is solar and arc. So if I wanted to have all my bases covered, I could just put on void resistance. And then I have melee well maker, which is pretty much the best well mod for this build because anytime... We get a melee kill it's going to give us a well which is obviously very good and then on the boots i have void boots for some survivability in the form of having double better already this gives you a crazy amount of healing which you certainly don't really need all that much but there isn't really all that many other options you could instead use something like absolution and then you could use like you know some ammo finder mod or something entirely up to you and then i have font of might to increase our weapon damage anytime that we pick up a well so this build also has some pretty good damage with our weapons which is very very nice lastly i have an arc cloak so that i can get well of ions as well as using lightning strikes twice while also having some additional stats Otherwise, if you were to use like uh, elemental ordinance or something, you wouldn't be able to get an extra stat mod here. So that's the main reason that I have my cloak as arc. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do in terms of like swapping the elements on different pieces. But Well of Ions is very good because anytime we pick up an Arco Elemental Well, it's going to increase the melee damage that we do. So obviously this is very, very good. There's an absolute ton of Well mods that you can use. I'm kind of going to go through the majority of them that you would ever be interested in. But ultimately, I think the setup that I have is generally really good. If you didn't care as much about uh, melee damage, or sorry, weapon damage, you could certainly just swap off Font of Might. But let's go over all of your potential options. So... If you want the more survivability, you could actually use Explosive Wellmaker because anytime you get a kill with Jolt, it actually counts as an explosion. So you could use Explosive Wellmaker to then spawn a solar well, and then you could pair this with Well of Life to get some extra healing, which is very good. Or you could pair it with Well of Ordnance, which gives you even more grenade energy. But honestly, I already get enough grenade energy, so it's a little bit overkill. Another thing you could do if you wanted to get additional weapon damage, you could actually get a high energy fire paired with elemental charge and this will actually stack with font of might so you get a whole bunch of extra weapon damage upwards of 70 percent i believe is the number so that's very good or if you want more um super regeneration you could swap out font of might or whatever else or font of wisdom so you get extra intellect In my opinion those are pretty much the only good options feel free to mess around with them as you choose but well of ions font of might melee well maker bountiful wells and elemental ordnance is what i decided to go for your weapons you have pretty much an infinite amount of options right i'm just using an all-around setup that it'll enable me to do a whole bunch of melee damage by applying a debuff with tractor cannon and then applying a buff to myself with a one-two punch shotgun obviously though you could use like a thunderlord in your heavy slot a hothead do whatever you want in the kinetic slot you could use you know a sweet sorrow a sidearm a risk runner trinity ghoul if you want some crazy aoe the new delicate tomb uh, fusion rifle i really like but having double special would be kind of weird and of course having the wastelander or even an arc shotgun for the one two punch to increase the damage of your melee is very very good with the build feel free to use whatever you want there isn't really anything that's like particularly broken with this generally i just recommend having one two punch shotgun and then like an arc weapon so you can benefit from a font of might but again if you don't use font of might you could certainly swap around which weapons you use it's pretty much going to be it for the build if you guys enjoyed please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one and i will see you guys later peace